Hey guys, it's Fallen Dice, and uh, this is a tutorial for my automated kiln version 2.0. I got a video, or I got a, first a comment from a YouTuber by the name of Jester X Mailman 89, and he had just discovered my channel and said that he had a different way he did it and wanted to know if he could, uh, you know, put in a video response to to show me how he had done it, and you know, I am a big fan of other ways of doing things um, and again like I've said before if it's a great idea I have no problem using it given credit um, or it might even uh, give me an idea for something I hadn't even thought of or just even just get get me excited to try and 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 make something better and that's kind of what happened in this one um, I I'd watched his video and a couple cool things he did in there that I hadn't seen done before um, one of which was using uh, sticky pistons to uh, move gearboxes so we could put put them in and out of place as part of a timing circuit and I didn't actually use this but I am definitely gonna keep that in the back burner for possible future uses I, I definitely like the how that could be other thing too is the way he was ejecting his pottery instead of like the big you know two pistons going back and forth he just had a single piston that was pushing into uh, his dispenser block and that was another good idea and uh, I'm not using that one as well because I had remembered that uh, Renevo had done uh, a a new kiln and he'd actually did a double kiln but what he had done is he had shown that um, you don't actually need to have uh, your blocks set up like this it just the rules the mechanics of the game say that you just have to have four sides so you can actually do it like this and so that's kinda what he had did he had one here and then he went and you know did the same thing where he went over here so he'd have he had two going at the same time which is pretty cool I don't need that um, but with this method it gave me an idea for a better way to do my kiln so first of all um, I like being able to shut things off. Um, sometimes when you get too much stuff going, you, the particles, all that kind of stuff, you know, can start to bog down your game. So when I'm not using things, I like to be able to turn it off. And in the case of hibachis, they also have lots of noise, and it's another reason I want to turn it off, but plus lots of particles. So I came up with a, first of all, a simple way to turn on and off uh, the nine are the the nine hibachis, and when I say I came up with, I know this is not the first time it's ever come up with, um, but I, I didn't actually go online looking for something. I just kind of, you know, played around to see how this would best work out, and this is what I came up with. And let me just to make it not this confusing. There's no reason for that. All right, so we got a switch coming down. Uh, we have a redstone torch on the back of this so that uh, it inverts the signal so when we're off it's on because these ones you know we want it to be the same as here and since we're using vertical wiring here whatever this one is is going to be the opposite up top so if we didn't invert the wiring you know we'd have the, the, the outside ones on the middle one off and then the outside ones off and the middle one on so yeah, invert the signal send it under here into the block powers it when the uh, signal's off. Now when the signal goes on, um, there's now no longer a redstone signal on the uh, torch, which means it's off here. And that one becomes powered on, so that above it is off. And then of course we have the power going into all of the other ones on the outside uh, to invert it. So when we get power going into them, they are off. So semi-simple design. Um, not as super compact as I'd like, but there's really no choice as far as the dimensions of this. It has to be this wide. You got to have your three wide for your hibachis. You got to have a uh, repeaters going into these, and then the redstone on the outside. So it's going to be this big. Uh, the next thing I did was to go ahead and add in our. Well, first, we'll add in our hibachis. So you can see they got them over there. The same setup as what we had over there is right here. Got our nine redstones. Got the uh, inversion coming down here. 
And when we flip the switch, lights go off. Now if we come up and take a look at this, we no longer have any, any uh, hibachis are no longer powered. So again, the difference in the amount of sound you can hear, very noticeable. Um, the second thing I did is the uh, bellows. So a simple way of just doing the bellows. For, first of all, this is just for the turn off thing. So all it is is you got the turntable coming in here, and that's coming off the exact same line here. But what you could do is it could just come from here, down, underneath, and up. A couple blocks away on the corner, i got the redstone. goes right up into the gearbox. So we're going on and off, on and off. That gives us the uh, effect that we need. And then, of course, the uh, switch here. And it gets the final version over there. You'll see it, it it's it's concealed so you're not gonna have to look at it but you can do it however you want to um, but it comes over here when we've got power and I use the repeater here because I don't want this thing feeding back this way so it comes in there um, and it puts power here and that's gonna turn off our bellows and it also comes down here and then it turns off the turntable so the reason why I also well you know what Honestly, I don't even need it coming up to the bellows here because with this turntable off, um, there's it's not going to be up going up and down, so it'll just be either up or down, just not really that big of a deal. But anyway, so to demonstrate what I was saying, go ahead and get some unfired pottery. Uh, let's just do a whole one. Okay. So here's our normal, how we would normally see our kiln set up. And cook pottery comes out, or goes in, urn comes out. We go ahead and set it on the back here. So now it's it's not the four sides that we normally see it, but it still has four sides. Drop it in there, same thing. So with that being said, we come over to here. And I have always said I am a huge fan of simplicity and being compact. So the reason why this is up above the ground is Jeb, in his infinite wisdom, gave us flat worlds. Unfortunately, our flat worlds are always three blocks from bedrock, which kind of limits how far down we can go and what we build. So the, far, the lowest I could go down to put in my... Um, redstone on off switch is this far here so of course that puts my hibachis there and then the kiln has to be there but anyway uh, right now I just have a switch here again you know you can put the switch up as high as you want um, take the wiring down that's just kinda how I have it here this thing is as wide as is necessary <laughs> for this that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine for the walls. So, sorry. Have our power coming in here, and once again, this will turn it on and off, and it will turn everything off so all of our sound goes away, nice and quiet. Turn it back on, and everything's going again. The. Well, I'll come back in here, and we'll just that's probably the easiest way to show it. So, also coming off that switch, we have this, which will turn off our turntable, which is why everything else turns off. The mechanical power is coming in here. One single source coming in. Uh, this one goes over to here, it goes up, and it goes into our bellows. Um, then over here, we just have two blocks coming off, two blocks over here, going up again to a turntable. The uh, redstone on this goes just three simple blocks, but goes right into this gearbox, and it will turn off the, the mechanical power, and that's how we get our bellows up and down. In addition, we take that same that same redstone signal, and we go up and we use my nice little uh, dispenser block timer. So we have part of the signal going into the dispenser block, and the dispenser block I have seven, I'm sorry, six. Uh, slabs. Five half, one full. The other part comes around here and it's got power going into the block in front of the dispenser 
and we have a redstone on the other side. So for these five blocks that we have half slabs, there's no power coming in. When we get our full slab, it does power it. Um, the dispenser block is always powered, so we can keep our pottery going out. When that signal comes in, we get inverted and the power goes away. But we don't want to suck the, uh, the brick in, so we have our... Um, our piston here gets fired first with no delay whatsoever, so it, it um, ejects the piston, which pushes our uh, finished pottery here into our uh, obsidian pipe, intake pipe, which sends it along, and then it go ahead and sucks that uh, brick back, and after that brick comes back, it finally we get power here to our dispenser block, and that will once again place our unfired pottery inside of our kiln. So it basically it just repeats back and forth. The piston pushes the uh, finished pottery into our pipe, which sends it over here. You can put your chest as far away as you, you want to. But, yeah, I actually like this a lot better than the setup that I had before. Just because it's using the better than build craft a little more, so we're not using the water trough to go over there and... I think it just ties everything all together really, really simply, really easy. And as you can see, it's very uh, modular. So we could take and put one here, put another one here, and you know line them up like that. Or even if we wanted to get super modular, we could set it up so the uh, we got the two like he uh, like Mr. Our Renevo was using. Um, I'd have to do a lot more research into that one because the can't just have the dispenser block just sitting right there, so it takes a little more tweaking to make it work the way you want it to. But yep, there it is. There is our new automated kiln version 2.0. Um, tell me what you think. If you guys have any uh, other ideas for ways that we can make this even better, please let me know. I'll be happy to incorporate them. Maybe even make a version 3.0. Uh, as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, rate if you if you or give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. If you think it's a good idea, uh, comment if you like. I said you have any suggestions or just want to say hi, and subscribe if you haven't already to be notified of any future update uh, with my Better Than Buildcraft LP or just other tutorials I might be putting out. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.